Welcome to the future. I am a robot. Yes, you're right. I'm not really a robot. I'm a man doing a voiceover for the Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. But、uh, tell me, did I trick you? No. Oh. Oh well. Sorry for wasting your time. And here's the Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. <laughs> We were just doing the、um, classic、uh, Guy Sharon and Clint show trick of hiding from people in the hallway. We've got to get a different <laughs> studio. People walk past, and on the regular, we have to duck under the desk and pretend we're not here because there's people we are afraid of, or don't want to interview, or don't want to have on the show.、Mm. And the creepiest magician dude just walked past,、mm. and we thought. Um, let's just let's just avoid all confrontation. Let's avoid an awkward conversation、mm. and just hide from magician. There's no there's no guarantee he even wanted to talk to us. But you know, <laughs> it's when it comes to magicians, it's good to play it. Safe. You got to you got to play because it safe next thing、times. you know, if you don't hide, next thing you know, he's dragging you up on stage and cutting you in half. <laughs> and you know, I don't want to be cut in half today. But、oh, he's got one of those jobs. Yeah, and I think it's for magicians in general. Yeah. They're just creepy. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah, definitely. You get the vibes. What are the creepiest professions? We're going to make a list right now.、Mm. And、um, I got to be honest with you, I'm not completely exempt. I'm going to throw、um, comedians on there as well. Oh, you think comedians are creepy? I think comedians are creepy because they do a gig and、mm. then they hang around at the bar afterwards, going, "Hey, ladies, yes, what did you think of my set?" <laughs> Um, circus performers have got to go on there. The circus is in town at the moment. Comedians are、um, one of the creepiest professions because it's a weird thing to say it's your profession. When you、yeah. go, what do you do for your job? You go, I'm a comedian. Okay,、yeah. okay, well that's your hobby. What do you、yeah. do for a job? Well, nothing. I just stand here and they give me free drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Uh, until yeah. my tab runs out. Yeah, Kerwin O'Malley just、uh, texted in men who judge child beauty pageants. Yeah, <laughs> I think anyone in the child beauty pageant arena is probably pretty creepy. Also, the guys who host. Adult beauty pageants. Yeah, you know the guy in the tuxedo is on there and he's always singing like, "She's the most beautiful <laughs> yeah, girl yeah, yeah, in the world,"、yeah. and he's hosting the bikini segment. Can, can I let you know a secret?、Yeah. I actually am good friends with the man who hosted、um, Miss、uh, Miss New Zealand last year. Yeah, great guy, but yes, creepy, creepy as all hell. Shaz, you went here before. Do you agree with us that magicians should be on the list? Yes, and David Guetta. <laughs> Even though that's not a profession, it's not a profession. I don't know if you can study to be a David Guetta. What do you do? What do you do for a job? I'm David Guetta. Are you David Guetta? Yes, I am. Are you qual- are you a qualified David Guetta? I'm actually a registered master David Guetta. <laughs> a lot of DJs are really, really creepy though. Yeah, yeah. oh, DJs got a top of the list. So <laughs> creepy with all their energy drinks and their hand waving. It's just full on. Megan, the creepiest profession. What is it? Clowns. <laughs> <laughs> One word, enough said. One word, a lot of face paint. Clowns. Are you afraid of clowns, or you just find them straight up creepy? They're just scary. Yeah. One of my favourite young stand-up comedians in New Zealand at the moment. His name's Stephen Wett, and he is hilarious, really funny guy. But he's also a clown. Oh, really? And when you find that out, though. That blows your mind. Is he a clown when he does his comedy on no, stage? No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 so he's no, no. a part-time clown. Daytime children's birthday entertainer. Yeah. Nighttime comedian. Wow. Great comedian, but when you think of him as a clown, you're like, this is quite weird because his adult material doing stand-up comedy is quite adult. Yeah. And so when you think of that guy entertaining kids, you're like, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Mega.、Um, sorry, Vanessa. What is the creepiest profession? Funeral directors. Oh, oh yes, yes. So it's a weird one because you're dealing with dead bodies all the time, and you've chosen that as your job. Yeah, exactly. Who would want to do that? <laughs> and it's, it's not really a,、um, a job you just fall into, is it? Well, I said it's a job you have、no. to fall into because you don't. You, you're right. Well, are you at school going? I like dead bodies. I want to get paid to work with them. <laughs> One of my favorite things about funeral directors is they're always doing it with their sons as well. Yeah, it's a family business. It's, it's always, always like Marston and sons. Vanessa, can I ask what you do for a job?、Um, I work for the government. You work for the government. Are you in? Like, yeah, I don't want to elaborate. Are you in that? Are you in the men in black? <laughs> <laughs> are you a member of the FBI? <laughs> I'm、oh. not cutting out the family. She's cutting out now. This is too convenient. That is too convenient. <laughs> She's cutting out. We can't、yeah. talk to her. She's in the SIS. See you later. <laughs> See ya, Je- Jenny. What is your? What do you think is the creepiest profession? Well, I don't know. People think I have a creepy profession. What do you do? I'm a gynecologist. Oh, gynecologist. <laughs> I don't think that's creepy because you're a woman. <laughs> It's、yeah, cr- I know. I think so too. But it's kind of hard when most of the conferences I go to are, have vagina or vulva. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't. Ha- I couldn't go to a male one of those. I would find that creepy.、Yeah. So my 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 big question is: 
what point do you go, I'm going to focus my studies and my career specifically on women's genitalia? Uh, it's more women's health that I focus oh, on. Oh, that's okay. a much more positive way of yeah. I yeah. made it sound creepy, and I'm sorry for you that. Did. As men, we're not allowed to put it on the list, but seeing as you said it, Jenny, we're going to put yeah. gynecologists on the creepy list. And Hazel, what are you chucking on the list? People who sell ice cream out of trucks. <laughs> that's true that's true it's it's like if you're at a dairy fine at an ice cream store fine if you're in a truck that's moving creepy if you're bringing the ice cream to the playground <laughs> that's just step too far bro though i do find yeah. if you wear if you wear a cleavage uh bearing top that they can look down when you get your mr whippy or whatever it could be then you're gonna get a couple extra swirls on the top they're selling it to kids well yeah well and adults <laughs> All right. Only kids, the adults do that. Kids hey, don't kids, do that. Kids appreciate cleavage too, mate. Guy, Sharon and Clint on the edge. One of the big stories today, and I don't mean to laugh at this because it is very unfortunate and people got hurt, were the fireworks uh, during the All Blacks game. They yeah. went off after the Haka. Yeah. Sharon, you were there, and uh, Chang was petrified, but they um, they went a bit haywire to the point where they hit people in the face. It was really loud when it yeah. happened, but I've only been to two All Blacks games before, so I didn't know if that was louder than normal. I did, <laughs> A lot of people did get a fright when because you heard the crowd go, ah, because it was, people didn't expect it, because I think mm. it didn't... What noise did they make? <laughs> and it didn't go off. I th- I don't think it went off at the time it was supposed to. I think it was a couple of seconds late. It was cool on TV. We've actually managed to get some um, secretly recorded audio from the stadium when it happened. So it was right after the hucker. Go, Monday, go, Monday, go, go. And that was it. That's real no. audio. That was the worst fake I've ever heard. <laughs> like the Good fact that you, the, yeah, it was bad. So bad. it's been. It's the how been... come the crowd went so quiet in between? Ah, uh, because they are surprised by how good the hucker was, <laughs> and oh, then. Right. Oh, it, wow. It's been the, weirdly the um the big story. It's a shame because it overshadowed an All Blacks uh, hiding where they smashed Australia, which is something New Zealand always loves and is always passionate about. Corey Jane was asked about it yesterday and came on the news half chopped and thought he'd just done the haka really good. Yeah. And just thought he'd hakered so well yeah. that the Australians were frightened. When really they worried about this shonky ass like fireworks display they had going on behind them. Yeah. Set off by some New Zealand pirate who just like completely miscalculated the amount of gunpowder that he needed. Totally overhyped it. He was like, this is a big game, guys. No. We've got to go big. <laughs> and he put it in so much that it ended up cutting people's faces open. Well, we don't know if that, that was the reason. They also thought that maybe um, something had bent and the things that it was holding on to, and yeah. so that's why it went in a different direction. What, what guts me, though, is you know how, like, whenever you go to, like, a, a, a show that has fireworks, or saying that oh, it's always pussy, you know, it's always, like, real. It's never as big as you want it, those flames that go on far mm. the Auckland Blues score. So finally, this guy was like, it's my big chance, it's an all backs game, I'm going to put on a real show for these people, they paid a lot of money, and he did his big show, and a few idiots had to get their face in the way and ruin it for the rest <laughs> of us. Maybe we shouldn't jump to conclusions that it was his fault. Has anybody considered the um, option that maybe it was Quade Cooper? <laughs> Maybe it was. That's Just saying, option. didn't make the squad, still hates Richie. Maybe he tried to blow the stadium up. That's a very good... <laughs> could have been a Quade Cooper terrorist attack. It could have been. But it was funny because um, they asked Steve Hansen last night uh, on in like a press conference. They're like, oh, are you worried now that the fireworks might get the players? And his face kind of like, he thought about it and he goes, oh, I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, actually, now, yes, I am concerned that maybe... He, I mean, imagine if that had happened to, happen to hit Richie McCaw. It's like Michael Jackson in the Pepsi commercial... <laughs> All over again. <laughs> Richie McCall's face is on fire. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the urge. Ladies and gentlemen, we're supposed to be uh, talking about something else right now, but we've had breaking news. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news for you and your ears. It's breaking news. <laughs> this is from uh, Megan's news desk, and so we decided to um, to double check it. I fact checked it on 3news.co.nz. This is a real thing. I just stole her news script. This is what it said. There are fears that a powerful, drug resistant form of gonorrhea is on its way to New Zealand. Known as the CLAP, a case of so-called sex superbug has been confirmed in an Australian patient. And it's on its way to New Zealand. It's only a matter of time before cases can be confirmed here. Does the super sex virus have a smart passport? Or will it have to go through the slow one? Because that'll buy us some time. If he doesn't have a smart passport, he'll have to go through regular customs, and that'll buy us a little bit of time. But not much. Mm, no, but unless he does go through the smart gate, it still doesn't recognise him because he's wearing a hat. Yeah, true. If you're, mm. at, cu- if you're at customs at the moment, anything you could do to slow down um, the <laughs> gonorrhea super virus will help everybody in the country. This is literally a terrifying situation for everyone involved 
permanent gonorrhea that you can't treat with drugs. Uh, 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 um, How funny is this? I'm trying like, to ask this question in the most G-rated way possible. Yeah. Is the only way that you can catch this through um, making love in this club? Yeah. I believe so. Unless um, your boyfriend who has gone away to study in Dunedin and you're still at home says that he caught it off his flatmate's towel. In that case, um, probably believe him. He's probably telling the truth. Yeah, definitely telling the truth. The New Zealand Sexual Health Society president, Edward Coy- Coylan, has said this is a major public health, health concern. The, um, the first step to avoiding it is uh, contraception. That's okay. the first thing. That's a good tip. Yeah. yeah good. Well, do well, just do, for life in general. Do that yeah, anyway. People well, should the, be doing that anyway. The yeah. first step is probably um, abstinence. Yeah. Going into a um, going into a secret, uh, like a, a nuclear fallout sh- shelter. Oh, b- a bomb fun? shelter. Bunker. Bomb shelter. Yeah. But realistically, let's just... Uh, by lots of glad rap. Todd, <laughs> what, what is it? Well, you've got a name for this virus. Yeah, well, seeing as it's like a, a hybrid of the gonorrhea, why don't we call it herpagonorifilis? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you're going to have little dinosaurs running all over you, though. I reckon put a, I reckon put a super <laughs> in front of it, and you've named the new sex virus. It is perfect, Todd. Okay, the country is on high alert at the moment. There is one person we need to talk to to know if he's going to get the story out to the people in time. Yeah, his let's na- call him. His name is John Campbell. Oh, Who of else? course. We'll call John straight after this and just check that he's on it. Well, because this is breaking news. The story. I don't think he's going to have it. Oh, no, no, no. He won't have it. Although he's a very good looking man. We are facing a national STD emergency. Clint, sound the guy shouting Clint alarm. <laughs> Wow. So that's going to panic some people out there. Wow. Is that, that re- is one drunk ambulance. Is that really the best alarm we could come up with? A, a fire alarm with a, a, a horn in it? Or well, I kind of hoping for something monumental. I don't know, mate, but it is breaking <laughs> news. We're on. We are. We are covering this story live and to the minute. Megan just broke. The, Megan just broke the news that there is a, a wave of drug resistant gonorrhea heading towards New Zealand. How is it's, it getting here? On a boat? Because I'm imagining a team of little black bugs that, um, I, as I said before, have bondage bikinis on, and they're all sitting on a uh, surfboard, and there's like a thousand of them with little paddles, where they're just like paddling over, like, he, 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 the whole way. They yeah. have been Picture described it. as a sex superbug, most likely to strike. Oh, no, superbug, they got capes on as well. Most likely to strike uh, <laughs> people under the age of 25. There, there is one man. Who can get this story out to the country even faster and more effective than we can? Hang on, before we call him, under 25, are you saying that because people over 25 aren't doing it anymore? (laughs) No, we're saying because we're not idiots. All right. All right, let's put our call in to Mr. John Campbell. Oh, hi, John. It's Guy Williams here from the Guy, Sharon and Clint uh, show. Well, no, did you put your own name first? Yeah, I did, I did. I'm sorry about that, John. I'm sorry oh, about that. Oh, I'm, not, I'm offended. John, I mean, I... at the very least, chivalry will require you put Sharon first. Mm. <laughs> exactly. Than John... you, so you'd put him first. Mm, thank you, John. J- John, pressing yeah. news. What's your What's your number one story on Campbell Live tonight? Um, we got we got really good stories tonight. We actually we talked to homeless people who live on. Queen Street, it's absolutely fascinating. Scrap it, mate. Why they're there and what, and what their lives are. And also, um, I, you know, we've been doing it at home with the leaders. I've been at home with Jamie White. It's a good show, really good show. Okay, scrap that, mate, because we've got big news, all right? What? Super okay. sex bug coming from New Zealand, from Australia. Right now, a strain of gonorrhea that cannot be stopped by drugs. Mm. You're joking. Yeah. Have you heard about this? This is just breaking no, news now. No, from, from has this not no, no, Has Super Gonorrhea not hit the Campbell Live newsroom yet? <laughs> No, it, it hasn't. I, I don't know. I'm b- absolutely bewildered. We thought you were the first person to call because we knew you'd be yeah, an expert in yeah, the market. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it can't be stopped by any drugs. No, no, at the moment, no. There's been a case of it in Australia and they're worried that it's only a matter of time before it comes to New Zealand shores. Well, I would say, yeah. Guy? Well, there's half a million New Zealanders in Australia to start with, Guy, isn't there? I've just had a terrifying thought as well. Doesn't your girlfriend live in Australia? <laughs> Oh, stop now. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> panic stations. I think you should cease and desist. Where, what, where, where something else? What about Little House on the Prairie? That's a lovely thing. John, it's, the, it's, John it's, sec, it's sexual Ebola. We've got to cover it. 
This no, is, no, no, no. This is, wanna... this is huge news, John, and we're sure we're here, we'll hear more about it on Campbell Live tonight, and we'll also hear about the homeless people in Auckland and Jamie White as well. John Campbell, thank you very much. We know you'll get this out to the people. Okay, thanks, Guy. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. John, okay, um, bye-bye. John, I'm really sorry about the last two minutes of your life. Yeah, I feel really depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 7 p.m. tonight, I'm going to be watching because I'm sure that Campbell Live is going to scrap all the crap that he was doing previously to make sure he focuses on this massive breaking development. This is affects us all. Look, if you're out there, everybody, just stay safe. Please, safety now is paramount more so than ever before. And if you're in Hamilton, maybe just stay indoors for the next few days. <laughs> Double wrap so you don't get this crap. <laughs> Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the studio the wonderful, the amazing host of X Factor, Dominic Bowden! Yeah. One time you got my name wrong, right? Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> Unbelievable. I walked out, I'm looking, are you serious, bro? He called me another Dominic. Dominic, <laughs> so good to have you in, and yes. it's so good to know that uh, X Factor is coming back for... Mm-hmm. 2015? 2015, with but a question the, mark at the end, the yes. Audition, the auditions <laughs> are starting soon. Yes, actually they're starting on October the 11th, so it's, thank you. That's October, real soon. Real soon. But it and is quite exciting that the season is coming back. Is there any secrets you can tell us I yet? I can tell you a huge secret. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret? It sounded a little bit creepy. Tell, tell, um, me, the, tell me the huge no, no, secret. No, no, the, the bands are this time. Bands, yes. we're allowing bands. So that, yeah. That's not really, is that a big enough secret? Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Is that going to be good? Yeah. Also, so, so you can be uh, in a band. And yeah, as, and that's going to be in the group section. Okay. And that means they can bring out like the drums and the guitars and stuff. Drums, yeah, yeah. We, the whole thing is you can't be more than five in a group, mm-hmm. and you know, playing the instruments, and it's got to be more than one singer. But the other guy can just do like the backups. Mm. We've got a mission for you because Uh-oh. the executive producer of the X Factor mm. yep. is also our boss here as well. Yeah, he has been storming around here the last week and if anyone asks him anything about X Factor or you hinted it, trying to guess a judge especially, he gets really angry. <laughs> so what do you want me to do? So what mm. we want Call you to do... And pretend that I'm not on the radio and see if he'll tell me anything. No, we want you to ring Andrew Yeah, apologising for accidentally revealing a judge in our interview. <laughs> okay. And see what he does. <laughs> so good luck. Okay, here we go. Oh, shit, I'm not laughing now. Hello. It's just it's Dom, bro. Yeah. I just did an interview on the edge, and I may have revealed uh, your your judge for next week. Is that going to be a problem? Well, what do you reckon? <clears throat> well, guy, just sort of, he, uh, it's out there. <laughs> well, what? Well, hold on. What's out there? Well, that um, we're. We don't, we don't need pauses here. No, but I'm sorry, mate. I feel I'm kind of I'm nervous talking to you now. It's sort of. But what did you reveal? I revealed that you've signed Simon Barnett as the first judge. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Damn it! Yeah. Damn it! We wanted you. We wanted. To, yeah, we wanted to use Dom to trick you into revealing the judge to us. It was re- <laughs> judge reveal inception, Shusty. You think I'm going to do that? You, oh. think, you think that? Jeez, that's 101, Tim. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Shusta. I mean, <laughs> okay, that's, yeah. But the, hey, Dom, the pauses. You yeah. Got those things working the well, pauses man. within the <laughs> pause. Look, I'm, look, man, I've been training. I've been in uh, in boot camp pause. So I think I think you're going to be really impressed with what I'm going to deliver. Shusta, <laughs> right. um, we'll leave it at that, yeah. mate. But we just want to make sure you've considered someone for the judging panel. He goes by the name of Chang Hung, and he'll come to you very cheap. <laughs> right. Chang. Send him my way. Send him my oh, way. Oh, my gosh. Hey, wow. What uh, a treat. Is it true there's going to be an announcement next week for the judge, though? Is that a real thing? No, there's no announcement. About anything. The announcements about the announcements will be announced at further notice. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. About the announcements. The I announce- hate this we, are we doing society. announcements for the announcements now? That's that's smart. Mm. I yeah, think this yeah. is Radio yeah. Gold. All right. Thank you, Dominic Bowden. All the details are at theedge.co.nz. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. We've got 50 grand that we need to blow out of these cash cannons. JJ, Mike and Dom are doing it at 7.45. We're doing it at 4.45 every day. You can choose either me, Sharon or Clint to shoot the cash cannon. And I still haven't been chosen. <laughs> despite every day promising. <laughs> despite every day promising to shoot mine at Clint's face. So, today I'm upping the bar. If you pick me to shoot the cash cannon, I will shoot my money at Shazdog. What? What about that?
Get your cash cannon is about to blow. Let's do it. That you, you is might... not fair because also, why would you? Why would anyone want to choose you when they could choose me when I have been the most successful person to have their cash cannon blow? <laughs> um, you might get some success if you cho- uh, announce that you're going to shoot yourself in the face. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Can you okay. do? Yeah. Do okay. You... <laughs> okay. I change it. Good point. Okay. I will shoot myself in the face with the cash cannon. If someone chooses me. Okay. okay, I'm keen for you to be chosen now. Let's go to the phones from Auckland. We've got Casey. How are you? Good. Really good, thanks. Good. Hi. Do you have any idea who you're going to choose already, or do we need to convince you? Do you know, honestly, I thought I knew, but now I really don't know. Well, who, who are you going to choose? I was going to choose Sharon, Woo! but I think her luck may have run dry. Oh. And Guy did sound really tempting when he said he was going to shoot himself in the face. Yeah, can you Girl. do that? Can you please do Guy? Because I'm filming it right now, and I want to put this up on our Facebook if he shoots himself in the face. Are you ready, Casey? <laughs> yeah, let's go, Guy. Okay, okay go, all right, guys. here in we go. Face. Shoot yourself in the face! In three, two, one! Oh, he's scared! Been- he can't do it, he's scared! <laughs> Close your eyes. You... Broken. My cannon's broken. Oh, that is anticlimactic. Hang on, I've got a cannon. I can help you out. Hang on. Here we go. Let's try it now. No, your cannon's broken. Okay, another cannon. Here we are. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> so much money! Oh my god, it burns my face! I can't... There's so much money everywhere. We can't find the piece of paper that says how much money's in the paper. Still so got to count. Casey! Yeah? Guess what? Luckily, what? you got a second choice by getting Clint's gun because Clint's gun won you eight hundred dollars. Oh my god! So awesome! Yeah. Man, I'm good at the cash game. <laughs> Thank you so so much. You, You're welcome, mate. You had a guardian angel looking after you there, girl, because I think the uh, guy's arm was quite empty. I just I just got <laughs> shot with eight, I just got shot with eight hundred dollars in the face. How cool is that? How did that feel, by the way? It that actually hurt. Yeah. It actually hurt quite a lot. Ah, there's more in there. extra fiver in there. <laughs> if you want to play the cash cannon, be listening at seven forty-five tomorrow morning with JJ, Mike, and Dom. Four forty-five every day on this show. And if you want an extra way of entering, you can go and register at theedge.co.nz. Money, Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the bloody edge. What is the worst piece of memorabilia you have ever won, found, held on to? These mm. are the things people treasure. Made a shrine to, put atop the mantelpiece, brought out at parties to impress your friends. Does this uh, Chris and Rachel wedding mug that I use every day count? <laughs> That's up there. But not, th- not unless um, Michael Galvin gave it to you himself. No, just someone from Shortland Street. You've got a bad piece of memorabilia, though. Well, I don't have it anymore, but... When I was 13, I just moved to Christchurch from Timaru, and yeah. the only famous people we got down there were the Feelers, Patsy Rager, and the Top Twins, <laughs> or and Suzanne Prentice. <laughs> Who's Patsy Rager? I feel like Patsy she Rager, count. she's one of the greatest New Zealand country singers of all time. Oh, I stand corrected. She is amazing. Anyway, Sorry. so I went to a True Bliss signing when their <laughs> album came out. Already good. I lost my rag because I had never, ever met a real proper scene on the TV before celebrity. <laughs> yeah. And I especially loved Joe Cotton. And I got up there and I had my album. I was shaking, started crying. Yeah. I cried when I met True Bliss. <laughs> yeah. First rule of True Bliss, and don't cry in front of them. Joe Cotton had just finished your Pepsi. And I was like, can I have your Pepsi can, Joe? <laughs> and she said, uh, yeah, of course you can. And she gave me a big hug and she signed the Pepsi can and gave it to me. I was like, thanks, Joe. <laughs> I took it home and it sat on my mantelpiece for about four or five years, actually till about the point that I uh, moved to Auckland to work at the edge where Joe Cotton was working. And you're like, I'm too cool with us now. No, and the first thing I opened with was, hi Joe, I've got your Pepsi can up on my on my mantle <laughs> and it's gone mouldy where your backwash was. Gold. How did she respond to that? She laughed and just felt appreciated that someone still was a big fan. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, she loved it. So on 0800 The Edge, your worst ever concert or anything memorabilia. Mari, tell us what your worst memorabilia is. My mum was at a, um, a concert at like a bar once and caught the drummer's water bottle from the Black Seed. <laughs> the drummer from the Black Seed's water bottle. And she kept it for like a month and it went mouldy on the water on the windowsill and she like named it and was like, This is water bottle with the drummer. <laughs> oh my god. That is that is almost as bad as my one. How how you know it's a bad piece of memorabilia is you can't even name the celebrity. Yeah. It's just the drummer from the band that I saw one time. Thanks, Mari. Olivia, what's your worst memorabilia? Hi, my name's my um, I went to a Taylor Swift concert and one of the strands of her dress broke that had all the little gold beads on it. Yeah. And um 
But I kept one of those be- those beads because I was close to the stage <laughs> and I still have it today. Did you do anything with it? Well, my friend offered to buy it for $50 and I said no. Sell what? it, sell it, sell it. It was the easiest 50 bucks sell you ever it, made. Olivia. My question is... and now I'm regretting it. Did you find the beads or did they fall off? They're like, they found off her, um, fell off her... Because to me, it sounds her, her it sounds like you attacked T-Swift. <laughs> <laughs> I might have, nah. <laughs> Sarah, what is your worst memorabilia? <laughs> uh, well, when I was 16, I went to my first concert ever, and it was UB40, and my dad paid for me and my friend to go, and the saxophone player, he threw out his sweat towel, which he just wiped his brow with, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, and threw it out into the crowd, and uh, and I caught it, and me and my friend, we were stoked, and we cut it in half so that we could both have half and share it. <laughs> wow. So you've got a sweaty towel from UB40 sax no, player. No, she has half a sweaty <laughs> towel from a UB40 uh, sax player. Man, that must smell by now. <laughs> I admittedly, I don't have it anymore. That's like 20 years ago. Thank but, um, God. Thank God. Yeah, I thought I was so cool, and I took took it home, and I told my dad, and he was like, what? That's gross. Your, but I still thought it was cool. Your dad almost said to you, cool story, bro. Aww. And it's your own dad. <laughs> <laughs> Good memorabilia, Sarah. So 0800 The Edge, your worst piece of memorabilia. Keep them coming in. Someone has seen... Uh, Sharon's signed Pepsi can and they have a signed Martin Guptill mini pump from the Black Caps from about five years ago. <laughs> the text machine is um, is trying to match your Shaz dog. Someone got a visor signed by Paul Tito. <laughs> <laughs> that was that? Bra- he was an old All Black. Hey, oh, brackets. he was the ginger guy, right? The ginger guy. Did he ever the- make the All Blacks? Well, no, he was, he was a Mouldy All Black. He's famous for being the first and only ever ginger um, Mouldy All Black. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone has a boys to men sweat rag That would be awesome yes. That's actually pretty that good. Is good Someone got an autograph of someone who got killed as an extra in Lord of the Rings A.K.A. <laughs> everyone in Wellington <laughs> So 0800 The Edge What is the worst piece of memorabilia you own? Uh, on 0800 The Edge we've got Adele What's yours Adele? It's a piece of glitter from a Kylie Minogue concert <gasps> Oh my god I have the same piece of glitter What? <laughs> That is amazing. What colour is your one? Gold. So is mine! This isn't a real thing. No, it is a real thing. It she is, had all this, it like, is. She had all this gold confetti come out during the show. It was amazing. Yeah. And it was all on the floor because we had like that A class piece and it was there. I'm like, I'm going to take this. And Same. The hey, the bag I took. hey guys, I hate to break up the party and I could sit here and yarn about Kylie Minogue's gold confetti all day, but we have to move on. Mm. Well, Sorry. Well, I'm with you, Adele. <laughs> I'm with you, girl. Maybe if it was well. signed confetti, but it's not even signed. <laughs> it was her own. New Zealand show You ever. found some rubbish on the ground oh, and you sh- took it home. You guys are just jealous because you don't have anything to add to this conversation. <laughs> Lysandra, what is your worst memorabilia? My worst was um, I had no money when I went to work and, and Fergie and them were performing. Black Eyed Peas were performing at the event centre. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I said to her, because I was on my break, oh, can I do, you know, I don't have any money, but can I do some press ups for Tim? She goes, yeah, of course you can. I went down to 20 press-ups. I was seven months pregnant. What? But she didn't know that because I had my shirt hanging out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when I did that, when I stood up, she went, oh, my gosh, you're pregnant. Did Fergie did. Press-ups. Who were you doing the press-ups for? Fergie. And what, what, what job were you Fergie, doing? Eight man, who will I am? What, what, you, what job were you doing where you were taking a break with Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas? I worked at the number one bar at the event centre, so okay. I was selling the alcohol. Okay, so Fergie was just chilling out there, and you did some press ups while pregnant. Just as you, just as you come in the door yeah. there by the entrance way, they were just over there doing signatures after and, the first part of the show. And okay. what did she give you? Um, I got a black eyed piece, black singlet that had the black eyed piece with an <laughs> elephant on the butt. Yeah. Okay. But when she realised I was pregnant, she was like, "Oh my gosh!" So she pulled off. Um, a grey shirt, and I've still got it too, and it's got these signatures all over it. Oh, wow. wow That's that pretty awesome. awesome. That's genuinely so quite good. Are you allowed to do push ups when you're seven months pregnant? <laughs> you can do whatever the hell you want. Okay, if seven months pregnant. There, you're going to put on a show. Thank you, Lissandra. <laughs> <laughs> the text machine has been blowing up, and I've whittled it down to the three worst pieces of memorabilia of all time. Okay, hit us. Number three, an LMNOP set list. Oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> it's got to be but just Verona five times, eh? That yeah. is classic. Okay, number two. A drum skin used by Linkin Park 
but signed by the New Zealand Kiwi band False Start. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's probably the Why worst would you get it signed by a different band? Okay, that's bad. Lincoln Park one's cool, but then the fact that it's signed by a different band, not good. Um, the worst piece of memorabilia, though, has to be someone who texts in, my daughter has food that One Direction threw out the window of their hotel. It's old KFC, and they still have it in their freezer. What? What are they going to do? Save it for, like, when they break up? My dream is that they're going to do, like, a Jurassic Park, like, DNA experiment where they take it off them and try and recreate (laughs) members of One Direction. Guys, Sharon and Clint. Itch. So the I Love You Man competition is heating up this week. That's a way to to make it sound more exciting than it was last week. Oh, it's really starting to heat up. It's coming to the (laughs) boil. It's just so good. For those of you who don't understand the way the competition works, two people... Likely two blokes of the same sex who love rugby are going to be marrying each other legally in order to win a trip over to the biggest rugby tournament in the world next year. And right now we have two of those contestants. Please welcome to the show the wonderful, the amazing Ryan and Robin! You guys, uh, I had to ask them off air earlier if they were a gay couple pretending to be straight to try and win a free wedding because mm-hmm. these guys just kiss willy nilly. They'll just be kissing each other. We're like, kiss. And they'll just they'll start kissing each other. See, watch this. Kiss. Hey, you coming, mate? Hey! They've kissed, like kissed more times today than That's I've kissed cute. my husband today. Yeah. You can join in if you would you like to. Uh, <laughs> as, I, as I've already said to you three times today, I'm married and you're getting married. It's inappropriate. One of you boys um, have a father who is not too keen on the idea. Is that right? Yes, that's mine. Mm. Why? What's his reservations? Uh, he's just not really into that gay kind of scene. Yeah. Okay. Would your dad? So let's hypotheticals here. Would your dad be angry at you if you were actually gay? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. you can guarantee it on that. That's shocking. That's it's absolutely terrible. shocking. You reckon? He's an old fashioned. Your dad should love you for whoever yeah. you are. Let's call him <laughs> and wind him up a bit, seeing as he has that attitude. Oh, here we go. You, could, you should tell him that you've already won the competition and would he like to come <gasps> to the wedding? Let's go with that. Would you be Tell, him, tell him that you've won. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hey, yeah, Ben, it's Bob. G'day, Bob. You wouldn't believe it, but I won that competition. You are f- <laughs> joking, you f- <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> all I would like to know is, would you be my best man up on the altar? You can't get married to him, though. <laughs> we can't bail. Can you imagine that? You're f***ing joking. You still love you me, though, don't you? No, straight away, eh? No, no, no. I think I'm going to stick it out with him. You're going to marry him? Yeah, I, d- I just don't want to get a divorce or an old or anything. Like, he's my mate. I know, but you're not going to f*** him, are you? <laughs> well, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe it all. Be- <laughs> Benny, Benny, it's Guy, Sharon and Clint here from The Edge. We've got good news and bad news, and it's only yeah. one set of news. He um hasn't won the competition yet. He was just winding you up. Oh, the f- mother... F- <laughs> <laughs> Benny, we're supposed to play this on the radio and you've dropped so many swear words on this I don't think it's airable. I warn them though. Oh yeah, oh, well, good on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good on him, that f***ing mother... Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much for Benny and your uh, homophobic views. We really appreciate it. Give it up for Benny, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> the Edge does not endorse the opinions or viewpoints of Benny from Pukekohe. Completely the opposite. All right, lads, well, that is done. Good luck, I guess. <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. Oh, can we, can we say that went well? Oh, my God. Ryan and Robbie, if you like the cut of these two lads, Jim, you can go and vote for them at theedge.co.nz and maybe they'll win the best rugby prize of all time. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. No worries, mate. Do it for Benny. <laughs> <laughs> guys, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. Kids, are you ready for some learning? Yes, yes Mr. Williams. Excellent. Now, please welcome our special guest, Chang Hung. Can everyone say, Hi, Chang? Hi, Chang. <laughs> Chang's here. Hello, Guy Williams. What is this music? He's here to educate us with a, um, a snappy, cool teacher kind of beat going on. Chang, today you have brought in with you the sexiest names. Strap yourself in for this. Yes. The I, sexiest names. Yes, I got this email. This is like, like a press release. Australia's sexiest name of hey, 2014. Oh, hey, mate, mate, mate. Tell you what, there's one thing that Chang loves is a press release. Yeah, don't make it sound like you tried too hard <laughs> today at work. You got sent an email and you're like, I'll read this out for no reason. It's, so th- it's very interesting. So these are the sexiest names in Australia yep. for 2014. Yes. Oh, I'm excited about this. Unfortunately, Clint is not in there. Well, I don't Aww. live in Australia, so... So this is a, this is a 
huge moment. Mm. Finally, for all those young parents out there who yeah. want to have some sexy babies, yeah. these are the names that roll off the tongue. I'm expecting names like Alejandro <laughs> and Sebastian, <laughs> like names that oh. really have a lot of sex to Donatello. them. Donatello. Do, there's nothing hot about Donatello. What about Ryan, like Ryan Gosling? No, unfortunately, not in the list. Not <sighs> in the top ten. Okay, so here it goes. The top ten sexiest names read by Chan. At number ten is Sam. It's not sexy. What, what? <laughs> no, Sam is a sexy <laughs> wait, name. Wait, 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 wait. All that build up, and at number ten is Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at. I think that's inspired by Sam Kang. I don't okay. know if you guys have seen Sam Kang from the All Legend. That guy is Get sexy sexier, Chang. Number nine. Number nine is William. Uh, what, what? No. William? No. Okay. No. Number eight is Christian. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. That's from Fifty Shades of Grey. I can oh, see where that's come no, from. Yeah. Number seven now. is Grant. That's Grant. My, that's my dad's Grant. name. That's not sexy. Don't, don't celebrate your dad having a sexy Ooh. name, you psycho. Yeah, number my dad's a sexy lady. <laughs> At number six is Andrew. Ching, you can put your sexy voice on as much as you want. <laughs> At, that's not a sexy this name is a either. Terrible list. There is nothing sexy about the name Andrew. At number five is Philip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a little cousin named Philip. Girls find him quite hot, so maybe that's okay. At number four, I think uh, it's on the back of this uh, Australian swimmer, Ian. Ian. Yeah, Ian. Ian's like a plumber's name. Yeah. When's Guy going to show up? No, no, Guy, sorry. <laughs> Number three, uh, I think the Madden Brothers brought this together. Benjamin. When's Chen Benjamin. showing up? Okay, on the list? I can see some bit of sexiness Benjamin. about Benjamin. I, I quite like the full use of mm. Benjamin as well. I don't, I'm not as big a fan of Benji. I like the full use of Benjamin. Bit of a dog's name, yeah. Yep. And number two, David. Oh, God, this is so boring. What's number one, Chen? David. And number one, Australia's sexist name of 2014 is Mark. Mark. Mark with a C Mark. or Mark with a K? M A R K. M A R K. Chang. Mark. Mark with a C, I would have been with you. Mark with a K. <laughs> oh, you, so you like the Mark Ellis Mark? Yeah, I like the Mark with a C. Chang, Chang was so excited to bring this list to us today. He's like, I've come up with a list of the sixes names, sixes names. And we're like, all right, what's number one? He's like, Mark. <laughs> and we're like, thank you, Chang. Also, Mark. also, Mark is the most popular sexist name in Canada and the US. Oh, also. God, that was useless. Thank you, Chang. <laughs> really appreciate it, mate. Hi, Sharon. And Clint on the edge. Some, Love you, man. Sometimes you just need to be like, hey. There's a lot of negativity in the world. Hey, let's tell our loved ones we love them because we don't tell them we love them enough. So we're gonna do that today in a game that we like to call Love You Guys. Love you guys. Love, love you guys. guys. I love you guys. Love you guys. Hey, all blacks. You guys listening at the moment? You guys made me happy every day, and I don't say it often enough, but I love you guys. I love you guys. Love you guys. I'd like to say uh, I love you guys to my to my friends Lee and Kate Gilmore, who I think are absolute superheroes, and I love them very much. So I love you guys. Hey, I love you guys. Love you guys. I love you guys. You know, sometimes when you get a Burger King and you um, you buy like a, a Hershey's chocolate pie, and it's the best day of your life. Yeah. Yeah. I love you guys. Yeah, I, love you. I love you guys. I, I love, you, love guys. you guys. I love you guys. Hey, Gemma, share the love. Who do you love, babes? Um, I love my best friend, Michaela. I hope you're listening, and she's really good at dance. Oh, love, love you, Michaela. Love, love you guys. guys. Man, love I love you guys. You guys. That love was, you guys. That was so cute. Love Thank you, you Gemma. Catherine, who do you love? I love my sister, Alexa. It's her birthday today. She turns 17. Oh, oh love you, Alexa. Love you guys. Love you guys. Hey, Catherine, I love, I love you guys. Okay, I, I, don't, I love you guys. I don't say this often yeah. enough. I love you guys. This is the best yeah. feature ever. It's so happy. Just, Catherine, um, can you tell your sister happy birthday from us and that we love her as much as you love her? Hey, Lexi, they say happy birthday. Hey, I, do, I don't think we love her that much. I think you're overselling no, it. Tell her we love, love her. Oh, we love her. Tell her we love her and we'll never leave her. I don't even Either. know who she is. Tell her we're committed to her. This is a loving feature. <laughs> you shut up over there. Well, let's just not oversell ourselves, okay? Let's not make any... I don't want to have to go to her birthday next year, okay? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I love you, Clint. Uh, I love you guys. Not you, though, guys. What, what, how's this turned bad so quickly? You no, know, because you said you took back my love that I have. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, 100 the edge or text at 3343. Who do you love? I love Blue Ivy because she was the cutest thing ever at the MTV VMAs. Today. Oh, I, I love, love you guys. guys. love you guys. Beautiful kind of pain. Hey, even though you sing like that, Sharon, I love you guys. Oh, I love you guys. We're doing I, I love, love you guys. Yes. What about that? Who do you love? Who loves you pretty baby? I love um that Clint's keyboard. Do you like this keyboard? Love you guys. Oh, I love you guys. What do you like about this keyboard? Do you like it's the leather trim? Great. I like the little buttons on them. Oh, I appreciate that compliment. Oh, yeah. I love, love, love you guys. Love you guys. I like my friend Happy the Dolphin and Jeremy the Squirrel. Oh, oh love, you love you guys. Love you guys. Love we you. love you too. Aww. <laughs> oh, I went under the edge. Tim, we love you. 
you? Who do you love? Well, my sister Sophie just had a baby today. Aww. And her partner Cookie and her have just had a little bit of sunshine in their life. And I'd just like to say I love you guys. Oh, I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. Aww, guys. Especially love you, Cookie. What a name. Tina, what is your... Oh, sorry, I got too overwhelmed about that last one. Tina, who do you love? I love you guys. Oh, oh Tina, we love you guys. We love you. You guys keep me company when I'm driving home, especially on these nights when I finish at 6 o'clock from my job. You guys keep me company on my drive home, and it's great. Oh, well, thank you so much for having us in your car. We really do love appreciate you guys. it. Love, love you, you guys. Love you, Tina. T- Tina, um, can you keep me company on my ho- drive home tonight as well? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only well, way to um, reciprocate. Well, if you bring me, I can keep you company on your drive home, but you've got to be hands-free. <laughs> we got to <laughs> look. L- l- lucky line. for you, Tina, he lives uh, a minute's drive away, so you won't be stuck in that awkward situation for very long. Hey, thanks for your call, and I love you guys. Oh, I love, love you guys. guys. And oh. also, everyone that has us in their car at night time, we love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Yeah, in the bottom of my heart. I did, Betty. I feel so strong about this. I love you guys. Like that, like that Deborah Cox song, Who Do You Love? I love you guys. Hey, you know... you know, It was a good throwback. You guys did not appreciate it. You know when you, um, you, know when you get some tiny titties and they each have a different personality? <gasps> yes. I love all those guys. I love you guys. Oh, I love you guys. They're like my friends, but they're biscuits and I eat them and they're young. Yeah, but they're young mouth. You go, nah! <laughs> I'm more of a dipping Dunkaroos man myself. No! No! Yes. D- Dunkaroos were. Because you dip them and you dunk them and then you eat them. It was too unhealthy, though. Hey. Tiny titties stand the test of time. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. Edge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show the man who watches Short Street every week so you don't have to, James from Danita! Hello. Hey, James, it has been a roller coaster of emotions and just so much to deal with in Ferndale this week. I feel like it's a, um, a roller coaster every week, so let's crack off with James's storyline of the week. So, this week, Leanne and her new man's new relationship went to the next level. They keep texting each other during family events. <laughs> You're being very rude, Mum. Huh? Hmm? You're talking to Ula. What's the problem? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, <I'm> again. <laughs> and then she also took some after dinner selfies at the dinner table. With Cuddle her. in with me and Ned, Michael. I want to take an after dinner selfie. <laughs> Oh, oh, Nev. <laughs> that was my favourite part of the whole week because Nev was like trying to lean in and she was getting the selfie shot. Oh, Nev. It was not ideal at all. My, um, time for the secret scandal of the week. So this week I found out that Ava, the evil drug trial lady, had actually been on Shorten Street quite a few years ago. But she had long hair back then. Um, She was Harry's babysitter and in love with Chris. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Yeah, so I figured that maybe Ava cut off some of her hair and then came back to Ferndale, tried to kill off Rachel, Chris's Mm. wife, Mm. with her secret drugs. Oh, my God, my mind is blowing. That is, I reckon you're damn right about that one, James. This is hugely scandalous, and this is is leading in towards... uh, the scandal that we've had this week, the heartbreaking scene of the week. So TK had to tell his daughter that Sarah died this week, but he straight up lied to her. <laughs> she said that you were the most beautiful girl in the world. <laughs> <laughs> did he not say? Did she not say that before she died? <laughs> no, I checked back all the footage, and yeah, I don't want to be mean, but yeah, Sarah didn't say anything about her being beautiful. <laughs> Explain a lot of things, wouldn't it? Yes, she was smiling when her mum was dying. What? <laughs> <laughs> is that actually what happened in the it funeral? It is exactly what happened. I'm going to watch Shorten Street. This is a great show. <laughs> and can we finally wrap up with the Leanne moment of the week? So there were some really great Leanne moments this week, but my two favourite Leanne moments were when, first of all, she yelled at the doctor who was bullying Nicole, and then, (laughs) second of all, she got really proud of folding some towels. You're not trying to defend that odious man, are you? And look at these gorgeous towels. Am I the best laundry folder in the West, or what? (laughs) I've never seen Shaw and Street this year, but God, I love Leanne. <laughs> we definitely have to get Leanne on the show, or we have to just rename this segment Shorty Street Scandal about Leanne of the Week. Yeah. Look at these gorgeous towels. <laughs> James, that was fantastic, and that was Shorty Street Scandal! Hey guys.
Thanks, James. If you want to see the video version of this, give it a search on YouTube. Just search up Shorty Street Scandal. Thanks, James. Thank you, guys. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. Hey, thank you for listening to the podcast, everybody. It's almost done, but within there, you would have heard our emergency call to John Campbell on the back of the release of the Super 6 virus. After that call finished, he weirdly stayed on the line and uh, decided to give us a little bit of uh, his thoughts on the MTV uh, Music Video Awards that were today. Completely unprompted. We didn't say, JC, what's your thoughts on the VMAs? You know what that means? What? Podcast Extra. Oh, Podcast Extra. Podcast Extra. Podcast Extra. Podcast Extra. This is how it went. Bye! Although, what did you... I don't know. You know what? Did you see Beyonce on the thing of me drinks? Yeah, what did you think on the VMAs? Well, I... No, but what? And then she had some. I, I was just walking through from. I was in the editing, but I was walking through our office, and she was just sort of doing all this hip grinding. And then there was something behind her on the screen saying this was a feminist statement. Yes, <laughs> apparently, yeah. apparently, it's um, feminism these days is wearing no pants and flaunting your bits. <laughs> well, no. What the point they were making was that feminism is about women owning their sexuality in the same way men do. I'm all for that, and I totally believe that's appropriate. But if we're talking about equality of sexism, why is it only the women who ever wear next to nothing? That's what I'm men, saying. And I'll... the men in these entirely liberated times are still fully clothed. John, there's a great video of me <laughs> and my speedos at theedge.co.nz, if that'll help. You shouldn't be promulgating that. Well, it, you, see, it, I, you know, what point are you making, Beyonce? Excellent, point excellent making? point, John. Look That's a good point. Look forward to seeing you and your undies on Campbell Live tonight, John. <laughs> oh, no, no, just, you just put some clothes on. We're just partying more. You'll get a cold. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thanks, John. John Campbell, everybody! <laughs> Today's Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast is brought to you by Grass. Perfect for gardens and sport. Get Grass today from your friendly Grass vendor.